we go. Uh, good morning, everyone. So today I want to present our work uh, of uh, prediction and uh, cost function based algorithm for autonomous freeway driving. Uh, my name is Jun Qing, and I'm from Carnegie Mellon, I'm a PhD student there. Uh, so our work is based on our autonomous vehicle bus, which is from the Urban Challenge 2007. Uh, it actually already has uh, lots of uh, different uh, functionalities of dealing with scenarios like distance keeping, lane change, uh, intersections, and some basic interaction with human driving vehicles. And uh, based on the lessons we learned from the uh, urban challenge and uh, the platform we built, uh, we propose that uh, we want to implement a better autonomous freeway driving algorithm and uh, implement it uh, and test it uh, thoroughly. So uh, autonomous freeway driving is one of the most promising applications for autonomous vehicles. Uh, for human drivers, uh, freeway driving is time, kind of uh, time consuming, uh, but for robots, it's a good thing. It, uh, it's uh, of uh, relative low complexity compared to uh, interact with those unpredictable uh, urban traffic and the pedestrians. So uh, we want to do something that optimizes our algorithm specifically for freeway driving, include uh, distance keeping and uh, lane change, and uh, we want to verify its robustness as well. Um, so here's the framework of our autonomous uh, vehicle. Uh, we have the perception system, and uh, uh, for the intelligence part, we have uh, mission planning, which acts as a, a GPS system, uh, your GPS device, and uh, we have uh, behavior executive and uh, the motion planning. So the motion planning works like uh, the uh, the main role is uh, trajectory generation. So uh, the behavior executive is what we are working on now. It's uh, uh, focused on the intelligence of uh, interacting and uh, cooperating with uh, your surrounding vehicles. So it actually outputs some abstract command to uh, the lower level controller for uh, trajectory planning. So our output includes something like uh, desired acceleration, desired velocity, and uh, uh, the land you want to uh, merge to, and uh, some parameters uh, uh, such as uh, aggressiveness. So uh, why can we just use the uh, algorithm we developed for the urban challenge? It, it's actually already proved to be pretty efficient uh, in the challenge. But actually, um, uh, if you attend it, you, you will uh, feel that all those vehicles uh, behaves quite differently from human drivers. So there are no consideration on passenger comfort since no one sit, is sitting in the vehicle uh, in the competition. And uh, if the vehicle behaves differently from human driver, another question come here is, uh, it's actually hard to predict by the, the, the autonomous vehicle's behavior is hard to predict by surrounding vehicles. So then uh, it uh, causes it uh, hard to interact and uh, cooperate between the autonomous vehicle and the human uh, driving, driving vehicles. So besides we are using a, a rule-based uh, uh, behavior control algorithm, so we have a bunch of rules uh, if else, uh, if something happens, we do something. So uh, we actually develop it um, focusing on the basic functionality rather than the performance of the autonomous vehicle. So it has a very limited robustness uh, in real uh, road traffic since in real world, uh, not all those vehicles uh, strictly follow traffic rules, and uh, they are of different aggressiveness as well. And uh, for, if we, we want to build rule-based algorithm for that, uh, we cannot ensure that we can cover all those uh, corner cases, and uh, the rule-based algorithm is hard to extend as well. So we propose a new uh, approach, a new uh, autonomous driver design uh, for behavior, behavior control. Uh, we want to design an extendable autonomous driving algorithm. We want to use the human domain knowledge first to build a driver. Then we want to make the uh, autonomous uh, driver model to learn from human driver's behavior and uh, to emulate their behavior. Um, and then we will try, uh, we'll see whether uh, we can enhance the overall driver performance, which means whether we can exceed human driver's performance. Uh, especially we can, uh, we can see whether we can do, do it uh, with better accuracy and safety and uh, also fuel efficiency. Uh, so here's the progress uh, we achieved. Uh, in this presentation, I will uh, mainly introduce our work uh, of how can we use human domain knowledge to build a driver. And we have some other papers published on 
how can we emulate human driver's performance, and uh, we are now evaluating whether we can exceed their performance as well. Um, so the algorithm we propose here is called a prediction and cost function based algorithm. It has uh, functionalities of dealing with uh, distance keeping and land selection uh, and merge planning. Merge planning uh, means uh, when you choose a land you want to merge into, then it will adjust your velocity and position to get to the uh, best opportunity to perform the land change. Um, the, the prediction cost function based framework includes three steps. First, we generate some uh, candidate uh, strategies or candidate plans. One example might be uh, merge to the left lane two seconds later. Then uh, we put all those uh, strategies, we, uh, the, the potential strategies we generate into a prediction engine. So uh, where we will predict surrounding vehicles behavior and response to the strategies um, we generate. Uh, then after uh, that, we will uh, do a cost function based evaluation of uh, how good the strategy is. Then we'll choose the best strategy based on the uh, cost we computed. Uh, it actually separates the decision making into two parts. So one problem is uh, prediction. How can we predict surrounding vehicles behavior to our uh, uh, strategy? The other question is how can we evaluate how good the, the strategy is? So for the first part, the prediction engine we built uh, we want to predict surrounding vehicles' behavior. So we first define surrounding vehicles. Uh, we re represent it uh, using an uh, abstract vehicle map, which uh, includes uh, eight surrounding vehicles around you. And it actually provides the basic or the minimum information for the autonomous vehicle to, to, to make decisions. And also it fits our sensing range as well. Uh, and for prediction, we assume that all those vehicles uh, have a desired uh, velocity and uh, they have a, a basic distance keeping ability. Uh, this is a very basic prediction engine. A and uh, what's in progress uh, is uh, we want to consider the lateral movement of the surrounding vehicles as well. And uh, we want to do it based on the understanding of their uh, intention and uh, we want to introduce a probability in it as well. This is all in progress. Uh, it's not summarized in this paper. Uh, and after we, we predict the uh, scenarios uh, we gener uh, uh, corresponding to different strategy, uh, we use a cost function to evaluate how good the, uh, it is. So uh, we built four uh, categories of cost, uh, including uh, safety, uh, progress, uh, comfort, and uh, fuel consumption. So for safety cost, we have two terms. One is the clear distance, which means the relative position uh, a relative position between two vehicles, and also we have a braking distance, uh, a cost of braking distance, which means the uh, final distance if uh, both you and your leader slam brake. So we consider the uh, velocity of both uh, vehicles, and also we consider the response time of uh, the host vehicle, the autonomous vehicle. And uh, uh, as you can see, we, we have uh, some hard constraint here. It's uh, a uh, very simple combination of rule-based uh, uh, behavior control and uh, uh, cost function based control. We uh, will give uh, infinite cost for some uh, dangerous situations uh, and uh, which, uh, which means our planner will never lead the vehicle to run into that region. So we have progress cost. Uh, as I mentioned, we have a distance keeping uh, land, select, uh, land selector and merge planner. So for distance keeper, uh, the progress is uh, uh, the cost of uh, gap error. Gap error means the difference be between your desired gap and uh, the actual gap to the leader. And for land selection, uh, we compute the progress cost based on the benefit or time, time saving you can get through land change. And uh, for uh, merge planner, the progress cost is based on uh, the time and the distance it will cost you to do the position and the velocity adjustment. So we have comfort cost and uh, fuel consumption cost as well. Uh, after we build the prediction engine and uh, build the cost function based e evaluation, we put, uh, connect these two things together and did uh, lots of uh, case tests. Uh, we did case tests uh, to preliminary uh, adjust the weight of those cost functions. And, and the, the weight is very important for cost function. Uh, we need a 
good combination of weight of cost functions to ensure the basic driver uh, driving behavior, and also the cost uh, the weight of those costs may affect the preference of the driver whether you are you want to be aggressive or conservative or uh, n uh, normal. So uh, we build case tests uh, for some simple cases uh, uh, such as uh, distance keeping. Uh, where we evaluate uh, in uh, with uh, results leading vehicle. And also we test it in some emergency uh, 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 extreme cases, emergency brake. If the leader's velocity jump from like 20 to 5 immediately, what will happen to your, to your uh, autonomous vehicle uh, to verify whether we keep a reasonable distance to our leader. Um, so uh, after those uh, simple uh, cases, we built some more complicated one. Uh, one of them is uh, uh, the force land change, uh, which means the autonomous vehicle is uh, running in a pretty empty land and uh, it's of pretty high speed. But at some point, we, we want to merge into our neighboring land. Maybe we want to exit in that land. So, but that land is of denser and uh, slower traffic. So uh, we'll see whether our cost function uh, based algorithm will work in these uh, cases. So the, uh, the, the first video uh, shows here is uh, uh, the most no normal case. The neighboring land is of uh, slower traffic and uh, it's not uh, uh, so, so dense. So uh, we can find an opportunity. We first slow down and find an opportunity to merge in. So all those behavior control uh, is driven by cost. So it's pretty robust. Uh, we can also uh, verify it in some other uh, uh, force land change scenario. In, in this case, the vehicle slows down, but it finds that all those vehicles do not want it to merge into their land. So it, it waits for an opportunity, and, uh, and then the, it merged into that land in front of all those traffic vehicles. And uh, the third test, we have two gaps and uh, the vehicle will choose the most uh, appropriate gap based on its cost uh, and uh, merge in to that position uh, in a, a relative reasonable distance and uh, position and uh, velocity. Uh, so uh, we also have some other uh, case tests include uh, freeway entrance. Uh, we, we, verif we verify whether we can choose uh, an appropriate opportunity to merge in using this scenario, and uh, we have uh, other uh, scenarios uh, to verify uh, if some uh, vehicles merge in and out of uh, our land, whether we can smoothly and uh, safely react to their behavior. Uh, so this is a case test, and uh, we did some uh, statistical tests to get some uh, performance analysis as well. Uh, in our simulator, we built a three-lane freeway. Uh, we, we have a 20 uh, kilometers uh, freeway with a lower speed limit and a 40 kilometers long with a higher, higher speed limit. And we put simulated traffic in. They are of uh, different uh, speed uh, distribution, of Gaussian distribution, and uh, uh, different uh, uh, density. And uh, the uh, distance between vehicles are of Gaussian distribution as well. So uh, all those traffic vehicles can do distance keeping and uh, can perform a simple land change as well. Uh, we uh, randomly generate five scenarios uh, for each of the combination of uh, simulated traffic density and speed. So overall, we have uh, uh, 900 uh, kilometers of simulation uh, in real time. Uh, so another question comes here is how can we evaluate the performance of a driver? Actually, uh, we did lots of uh, literature research, but we didn't find uh, a standard or uh, quantitative uh, criteria to, uh, to identify whether your drive, uh, driver is good or not. So uh, what we did here is uh, we, only can ex uh, we want to extract some features from a test drive, and uh, then we can compare those features manually to see uh, how good the, the driver performs. So the features we extract uh, uh, include uh, the number of lane change, the average acceleration amplitude, the total time required uh, to achieve the, the goal, and uh, the, uh, uh, some safety criteria, for example, the accumulated time spent when the clear distance uh, is less than 10 meters, and uh, the accumulated time spent when the uh, braking distance less than 10 meters. So uh, after extract those features, we compare the performance of our new uh, uh, cost function based uh, behavior control with the uh, previous uh, rule-based ones. 
So we can save uh, we can save 20% uh, time in achieving the goal. Um, that's mainly because with these uh, much smarter uh, lens, lens changes, we have 80% uh, fewer lens change. And uh, the, the base, uh, because of the uh, cost of the comfort, the average acceleration amplitude is uh, efficiently restricted. And um, also, uh, we have a better uh, safety criteria. And uh, the algorithm is verified in simulation uh, at high speed and low speed, and uh, it has uh, verified robustness uh, in different traffic densities. Uh, so a summary, uh, uh, the approach we, uh, we have here is we propose a pretty straightforward but extendable vehicle behavior control framework, and uh, we verify it by case test and uh, statistical test in simulation. And uh, for future works, we, what we are working on is the a road test of those case, uh, uh, case experiments and, uh, and implement learning, as I showed, in the uh, whole developing framework. We want to learn from and uh, compare the performance with human drivers. Uh, we conclude this, uh, we, we summarize this approach in another paper. So uh, that is, thanks for your attention. Thank you.